Welcome to the second part of our translation video. In this particular video, what we are going to talk about is physically, how does the mRNA, tRNA, and rRNA work together to make a polypeptide? Uh, and so let's review very, very briefly what these three forms of RNA are. The mRNA is our messenger RNA. This is the one that actually carries our, our code for protein. And you'll remember that this uh, uses a triplet code to code for mRNA. Um, M mature mRNAs and eukaryotes have a 5' prime calf and a poly A tail at their 3' prime end tRNAs we're going to talk about in a minute. These are transfer RNAs, and these are going to be ones that transfer amino acids from uh, the cytoplasm to the ribosome in order for translation to occur. And then our RNA, this makes up our ribosome. And so in this case, RNA does have some catalytic activity. So let's go ahead and first focus on the tRNA here. And the tRNA looks something like a clover leaf. This is an image of it in a two-dimensional form. Uh, in a three-dimensional form, it, it looks a bit more kind of like a, um, a, I guess a boomerang might be the best analogy for it in that form. So it kind of looks like this in its three-dimensional form. Um, and one of the things to point out about tRNA is, yes, it's a single strand of RNA, but what I'm trying to show here, particularly in these regions, is that it actually base pairs to itself. So there's complementary sequence here that provides tRNA its three-dimensional structure. Um, I've labeled the 5' prime end for you, and I'm not labeling the 3' prime end because at that end, this is where our amino acids are attached. And so transfer RNAs, we're going to bring amino acids by carrying them on this three prime end of the MR or of the tRNA. The other important feature here of a tRNA is what we call the anticodon. Uh, and the anticodon is going to be found here in this lower loop. Uh, the anticodon is complementary and anti-parallel to the codon that we find in mRNA. And so tRNAs are going to actually base pair with mRNAs for a short period of time, and that's what ensures that the tRNAs are bringing the amino acids to the ribosome in the correct order to generate a protein. So if, for example, our codon was the sequence from 5' prime to 3' prime AUG, then the anticodon sequence here would be uh, 3' prime, whoop, I'm going to put, put this in green, 3' prime UAC, and 5' prime end over here, and the amino acid that this would be carrying would be the amino acid methionine, as that is the one uh, that tRNAs recognize when they are looking at this AUG codon sequence. Our RNAs are some of the uh, structural components of what we call the ribosome. Um, so I've drawn for you here roughly how we typically think of the ribosome. It consists of two subunits, known as the small subunit, shown on the bottom here, and then the large subunit, shown on the top. The small subunit is actually the first one to bind to an mRNA. Uh, and so what we're going to do real quick is we're going to draw the mRNA in here. The small subunit actually recognizes the cap and then binds to that mRNA sequence. Let's make sure to put in a poly A tail over here. Um, but the large subunit is the one that's in control of most of the catalytic activity. And largely, uh, the function of making proteins uh, occurs at three sites in the ribosome known as the E, the P, and the A site. 
um, though we are drawing these from left to right, their actual order as they perform functions are from right to left. Uh, and so that's how I will introduce them to you as I talk about them. So let's just give a quick brief background on each of these and we will see how they are involved in this process of making a protein. A here stands for amino acid. Um, sometimes I call this instead the acceptor site uh, because what's going to happen is tRNAs are coming into the ribosome from this direction over here. And so tRNAs, and we're just going to kind of draw this right now as um, a little box essentially, tRNAs are going to be carrying on them amino acids. And so those tRNAs with the amino acids are going to be coming in to the A site. That is where the tRNA is going to recognize an mRNA codon. At the P site, uh, that's where we have peptide bonds formed. And so P stands for, uh, I'll write it up here, peptidyl. And uh, as I mentioned, this is where we'll see peptide bonds formed. And then finally, E here is going to stand for exit. And this is where tRNAs will exit from the ribosome at the end of this process um, after they have been used. All right, so let's draw out this process a little bit and talk about in detail how does translation actually occur. Um, and just to remind you, this all begins with an mRNA, a mature mRNA that has undergone processing. It's got its five prime cap. It's got its poly A tail. And this mRNA immediately is going to be recognized by a ribosome, uh, particularly the small ribosome subunit, which in eukaryotes is going to bind that cap. And so I'm going to draw that right here. So this is our small ribosome subunit. And it's going to begin scanning this mRNA from 5' prime to 3', prime, and it's going to be looking for the first AUG in the sequence. And remember, uh, we've talked about how AUG is not only encoding for the amino acid methionine, but we also call it the start codon. This is the first codon that's going to occur in an mRNA sequence. It also defines for us what we call the reading frame of a protein. And we'll come back to this idea of a reading frame in a couple of minutes. So after that start codon has been recognized, what we're going to find is the tRNA carrying an anticodon. And again, in this case, it's going to be that UAC is going to be bringing to this site an amino acid. And this is all occurring at that A site there. At this point then, what's gonna happen is the ribosome is going to shift down stream uh, three nucleotides. And so as that ribosome shifts, what that does is it now creates a new free space in this A site. The P site is occupied by that previous tRNA, and now what we're going to see is a new tRNA is going to come into this uh, site. And so the tRNA with the anticodon GUG is going to come in, carrying a new amino acid for this process. And so here's where then we start to see these amino acids being attached to one another. What's going to happen is the ribosome is going to break the bond right here between the tRNA and the amino acid and the P site. And it's going to create a bond between these two amino acids, the one in the P site and the one in the A site. As this happens, the ribosome is going to shift yet again another three nucleotides down the length of the mRNA. And so as that uh, ribosome shifts again, what we find now is uh, the tRNA that was previously in the P site is now in the E site. The one that was in the A site is now in the P site, creating yet again another free space for a new tRNA to attach here. And this tRNA would have the anticodon UCA, 
And it, again, is carrying an amino acid to this site. Just like we saw in the previous step, the ribosome is going to break this bond right here between the tRNA and the P site and the amino acid. It's going to create an ami a new bond between the two amino acids. Remember, these are called peptide bonds. Talked about that quite a while ago. And the tRNA that's here in the E site is now going to exit from the ribosome, and it's going to go search for a new amino acid, um, the correct one that should pair with it. And so this process is going to continue over and over and over again, where every th uh, that ribosome continues to shift three nucleotides along the length of an mRNA at a time. This process will continue to occur creating an ever-increasing uh, chain of amino acids that are exiting through a little exit tunnel that's located in the ribosome. These, protein, er, these amino acids will begin to, to fold into their correct three-dimensional conformation as they're actually exiting the ribosome. And this process is going to continue until the point at which a stop codon, um, which can be UGA, it can be UAA, or UAG, those are our three stop codons. Uh, this process occurs until one of those are reached. And so you can see here, now in the A site, we've got our mRNA with a UA, or UGA sequence. This is going to pair to what's known as a termination factor. The termination factor, just like the tRNAs, contain an anticodon that allow them to bind to the mRNA codon. And instead of carrying a tRNA, these particular uh, structures here have the ability to break the bond between uh, the tRNA in the P site and the last amino acid that's attached to it. And by using energy in the form of GTP, this particular structure, the uh, termination factor, actually causes these two subunits of the ribosome to separate from each other, disassociating this whole complex. Now, I said we would revisit this idea of reading frame, and I want to just take a couple of minutes to comment on this. Uh, a reading frame in an mRNA always is going to start with an AUG, that's our start codon, and it's always going to re end with an in-frame stop codon. And so this can be UGA, it can be UAA, or it can be UAG. Uh, and when we talk about reading frames, what we usually are referring to is that triplet code where uh, each three nucleotides represents a codon. And so if, for example, I fill in the rest of the sequence here, let's say it's CAC, uh, UCC, and AGU, uh, then the CAC, UCC, AGU are the next three codons in this reading frame after that start codon. Um, but the most important thing to keep in mind here is that for a protein to be made, uh, the, the ribosome is always going to start by reading um, from an AUG, and it's going to stop translation at an in-frame UGA, UAA, or UAG. All right, so we've covered quite a bit in this one, uh, this video here. We've talked about the role of the three different forms of RNA. We spent a lot of time talking about the three sites in a ribosome, particularly the E, the P, and the A site, and how they contribute and work together to create for us a protein. Um, we talked about how that ribosome reads the mRNA uh, code or sorry, the tRNAs read the codons and the mRNA, and that uh, the ribosome shifts down three nucleotides or a codon each time uh, a codon is read by a tRNA to allow for a new tRNA to come into that A site. 
We also talked very briefly about this idea of reading frame. And again, the most important thing to keep in mind here is that uh, in proteins, the reading frame is always going to start with a start codon and always end with a stop codon.